On this episode, I'm going to be showing you some of my tips and tricks so you can caulk your baseboards like a pro. So stay tuned. Hi friends, welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, consider pressing the subscribe notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So you probably just got done installing all your baseboards. They look nice and clean on the corners, on the outside corners, the inside corners, and now you come into caulking and then you find yourself, man, I just ruined my whole baseboard work because of this caulk. Well, what if I told you that I have some tips and tricks that can probably help you along the way so that you can have that nice trim and a nice finished product and you can paint over it after you're done. So with that being said, let me show you tip number one. So if you're a brand new DIYer or maybe you're just brand new at caulking, there's one important thing that you got to know about caulk and there's two major types. There's one called latex and one there's silicone. Silicone is not paintable and it's only mostly used on kitchens and bathrooms. Latex is paintable and it's mostly used on trim and around your baseboards or crown moldings. This is my specific one that I really like to use. This one is the Extreme Stretch. And uh, like what I say on every one of my videos, if you're interested on any products or tools that I use within this video, I'll leave all the links on the description down below. Now let's get to tip number two. In order for you to use this caulk, you have to have the right caulking gun. Now again, not all caulking guns are made equal. There are just your regular ones with the push lever and there's one that are dripless. Now the difference between these two are night and day. If you use the regular cheap ones with the push lever on the bottom, that pretty much after you start caulking, it will continue to drip. Now if you use this dripless one, so I highly suggest you go upgrade and spend a little bit more on a drip free or a dripless caulking gun. This one is by Newborn. It has a nice padding on the handle so it's easy on your hands and what's great about this it is does not drip after you go and press and squeeze if you're a brand new DIYer this probably is the only one you'll need over the course of your caulking career or your caulking journey tip number three is preparation before you start caulking your baseboards or any of your trim make sure it is nice and clean now let me show you some of the problematic areas before you start doing or start caulking there obviously are some gaps between the wall and your baseboard just like so. So the very first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that these little cracks or these little crevices will need to be cleaned. There's many ways to clean off that. Just get yourself a wet rag and just wipe off the baseboard, make it nice and clean. Make sure there's, there's no dust, no debris. And if you have one, get yourself a vacuum. Okay, so give them, but you are going to paint it but you still want to make sure that it's nice and clean so you don't have any of those bumps and defects along the way so you have a nice smooth running line so tip number four you might have a brand new tube of caulking like this and i know it's very tempting to cut a huge chunk at the tip the trick is to cut just a little bit amount at the top so just just enough of caulking will come out when you squeeze that caulk gun so the reason for that is you want to do at least two to three passes on your baseboard so you can have that nice clean lines on there. I know you might be in a rush to go and just cut the big chunk at the top so you can have a large amount come out at the same time. But trust me, you will end up using a lot of caulk and wasting a lot of caulk at the same time. Here's how to do it. Sorry to interrupt you right quick friends, but if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that big thumbs up down below. It'll greatly help out the channel and it'll help spread out to more people and hopefully help more people out. With that being said, let's get back to the video. So with your box knife or utility knife, just go and cut a little bit at a time till you get enough of the of hole exposed. Okay, so you're just gonna cut a little bit at the tip for now. And see that it didn't take much for us to have a little hole at the top. Make sure you cut it in a nice 45 degree angle. I made a special video on just caulking tips alone not baseboards so if you're interested on in that video of more tips and tricks on how to get nice nice even straight caulking lines check out this video right here it will greatly help you out so make sure you watch that video after you watch this one notice how the pin just goes there nice and there you have it it should be nice and ready to go okay so now let's pull back our dripless caulk gun insert your tube so here's another tip i like to put a little reference line so i know which way i always point which is this is going to be touching the bottom of the baseboard and this is going to be at the top okay i like to put that nice line right there and you're just going to run a nice thin line at first just like that notice how you get a little goop right there 
The reason why we stayed a little bit off the edge is so that we can use that goop and goop it on that corner so we don't waste that much caulking. Here's another tip. Always have a wet rag with you. This is now, if you don't have a wet rag, baby wipes will work as well. I got these baby wipes and they work just as great. Make sure you get your fingers all nice and wet like that. And if you have a spray bottle as well, that works just as well. Just make sure you spray a little bit. You don't want to over soak the baseboard. And then just run that towards the edge like that. Again, that's going to be one pass. Here's another tip friends. Every time you use your caulking gun, make sure you wipe off the tip like that. Okay, so you always have a nice fresh tip before going into the next run. Okay, so we're going to run it one more time depending two to three times. I like to focus right here. I didn't run my finger yet. You see how this next second line, you still have these little tiny gaps. The first one didn't do it. Now the second one, let's try it, see if we'll cover it. See that? It all disappeared just by the second line. So I think that should be good. So I'm gonna go start running my finger towards that corner so that it gets that caulking, just like that. So that second run definitely did the trick. Okay, so this excess on your finger now, just take your wet rag and wipe it off just like that. I'm gonna put this indicator mark, flip it so that I can caulk upside down like this. Thin line. I got a little bit of, you know, it kind of went off track, got that in there. Just gonna grab that and then run my finger right through there. So that's one, one pass. Notice how you don't need that much caulking to accomplish a nice bead on the edges or the corners. So a lot of people just go cut a huge tip at the top of that tube, go right at it, and they start scraping off with their finger and they end up wasting a lot of caulking, a lot of leftovers, just ends up on the rag. And that's just a waste in my honest opinion. Your finger now, just run it. Definitely see that there are still a lot of gaps. So in this case, I'm not gonna run any more here because that's pretty much filled. So I'm just gonna focus on where I need, where I left off right here. So I'm just gonna go run it one more time. Boom, see that how that nice thin bead will definitely accomplish that gap. Run my finger. Notice how it accomplished and look how much is left on my finger. Not a huge clump or goop. It's just a little bit and I can just wipe that off. So there you have it, nice and clean. No messy caulking going on excess on the wall, the baseboard, it just looks nice. And I know I got a little bit staining here in the baseboard, but don't worry, this caulk is definitely paintable. Next tip up is using some sort of paint scraper or your five in one, 10 in one. This one's a 10 in one that I use. This one's by, um, I think this one's by Bates. If you want to go and fine tune some of the corners, you see that there's a little bit of chunk right there. You can use, definitely use this to scrape off on those corners and do some fine tuning just by doing this, okay? Scraping off a little bit of excess and just following through on the end like that. And you can get a little bit on the scraper like that. There's no such rule where you doesn't say that you can't use one of these, but definitely this is great especially when you're making nice, you know, top lines, just like this, or use the other side and go like that. Whatever you think is the easiest and the best to make that nice clean job, use whatever tools necessary. My very last tip friends is to use masking tape. Please don't mind the different color outlet on this one. I will change that out on the next upcoming videos. So I digress, let's go back to caulking and using masking tape. There is no shame on using masking tape when you're doing your caulking job on your baseboards. Some people might say, oh, that's very unprofessional. Just tune out all the noise. And trust me, if you are very brand new at caulking and you first and you are scared to go and you might think that you might mess up or whatnot, there's no shame on using masking tape and this is foolproof. 
because you will always get straight lines every time. Trust me, even most of the pros use it. I use it. Let's go and let me show you how to use it. Place it on however high you want. You can go up here, which I don't even recommend you go up that high, but go at least one eighth to a quarter, probably half inch is probably pushing it, but I like to go at least quarter inch from the top of the baseboard. Frog tape will probably be the best for these type. This is just my regular masking tape. I don't have frog tape, but you got to make use of what you have, right? Now, if you're just brand new at caulking and you can't seem to control the squeeze trigger right here, just like this, so you're, you're, you're like, oh no, look what happened. You know, it's too much. I know I'm over exaggerating on that, but definitely this will help and save you and you can re reuse whatever excess that you ended up using. So let's go and solve this problem. So with the masking tape, this is pretty much foolproof. Just make sure you wet your hands like that with the wet rag, okay, or your finger, and just run it just like that. You're gonna have that huge goop, right? Take that huge goop and try to reuse it on whatever way you can, okay? Just like that. Now you can run it against that masking tape, that's why you have it. You're gonna run it, the excess on the bottom, feed it on the bottom like there, take the excess from your masking tape, run it again on the excess right there on the gaps. So this is pretty much like your masking tape becomes your canvas because you can kind of keep taking away from there without messing up your wall. And you just can keep running, taking that excess running and running it like that okay make sure you actually put a buddy tab at the tip of these things but look it comes off perfect every time there's no smears there's no mess it's all left here so if you made it this far to the very end of this video thank you so much friends now you're probably wondering what do we do with the rest of this caulk that hasn't been used. I know we only used a little bit and there's still a bunch more left. Well friends, I got a solution for you and this is what I love to use and to use to save these caulk is to use this caulk caps. Place it on top. Oh, that one flew. Okay, so take your caulk cap, place it right on top at the tip of the caulk and pretty much just roll it down just like that. Now you have a nice air type caulk and it's pretty much as simple as that. If you want to use it again, just roll up this caulk cap up and it goes back into its original form. You can reuse this caulking for another day. So friends, if you found this video super helpful, please hit that big thumbs up down below, press the subscribe and notification bell, and I'll see you friends on the next video.